Welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today we will be discussing Masonic aprons. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our thoughts and opinions are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions via our website at theworkingtoolspodcast.com. Today on the Working Tools Podcast, we have our usual host of four hosts. We have a worshipful brother, Stephen Chung, who's in Prince Charles Lodge, number 153 in Kelowna, British Columbia. Worshipful brother, Jared Dunham of Penticton Lodge 147 in Penticton, British Columbia. Very worshipful brother, David Colbeth from King Solomon, number 60 in Auburn, Washington. And I'm very worshipful brother, Matt Apple, and I'm a member of Mill Creek Lodge, number 243 here in Montlake Terrace, Washington. We've uh, departed a bit from our usual uh thing series that we have been doing over this course of this year of picking articles and reading them uh, and and we're all blaming david at this point that it was uh, his comment that the rosettes on the bc aprons must mean something and so that resulted in this in us starting sending a flurry of articles to one another about uh, masonic aprons and their history and and their symbolism and so i don't know that we have an article this month that we're or this week rather that we're talking about but there will be several of them i'm sure in the links that david provides in the the show notes see articles there are articles there are articles there are articles it is, <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just oh, not picking one articles and a video link oh hey. nice i have to confess to having not watched the video link <gasps> you didn't do your homework <laughs> i didn't i i was i yeah i'm bad bad podcaster <laughs> so um i guess with, with my acknowledgement of my badness uh where which article or which discussion do we want to start with first on the Masonic aprons? Is there something that jumps to mind? I, th I think Jared threw the gloves off, so he he gets to throw the first foot punch. Well, it was, it was the it was the it was it wasn't so much it was, it was the challenge accepted about the fact that you know here let me see if I can pull these so up here in Canada. Hold on a second, let me just oh, all this technology is always so confusing for me. While you're looking up stuff, I do feel obligated to say that the regulations from Grand Lodge to Grand Lodge are different. And yeah. for instance, I know in Texas, they use square aprons that are 14 by 14 and all white, uh, only because I listen to a Masonic right. podcast out of Texas. Right. And I guess there are variations on that. It's not the, the only case, but generally speaking, that's what they do. Right. And um, here in, in Washington, it might be different from Idaho, it might be different from British Columbia. It's so it varies greatly from Grand Lodge to Grand Lodge. Right. So and, that, this, and, and also as a, a tech note, uh, Jared's going to be sharing his screen and sharing some pictures, I believe, here. And so in Spotify now, you can actually watch us, not just listen to us. So if you're listening to us on some other uh, some other uh, platform. medium, some other platform, there you go, some other syndicated platform, uh, if you go over to Spotify, there's you can also listen to audio and you can watch the video. And when you turn off your phone, if you don't pay for YouTube, uh, it'll still continue to play the audio, even though you're not watching the video. So you can kind of go back and forth between audio and video on Spotify. It's kind of a cool feature. Not necessarily an ad for Spotify, but they are, uh, they do assist us in the background with our tech work. Uh, anyway, so right. go over there and take a look at the, at the video. So and here, and here I thought it was just the perfect voices for radio, you know. Right. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but as far as I know, Let's see if this shows uh, share. This is what you guys wear down in Washington state. Yes, the standard issue lambskin apron. Yes, no? More or less, yes. I was issued one of those. I have it right here. All right. Oh, I took my entered apprentice degree. And uh, that's what everyone in our lodge gets. It's a, just a white leather apron. And right. uh, I have it and I can wear it if I so choose. but. I, I rarely wear it. So, what, but you guys have white, basic white aprons in your lodges for everyone to wear. Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. yeah. So General. if you, if you're a visitor to a lodge, yeah. then those, the generally are provided. Yeah. yeah. Right. Something Whereas, like it. Yeah. Up here in Canada, this is what we wear, which is, is been, it's in our, <laughs> in our, this is, sorry, this is what you get when you finally pass, when you finally get through your third degree. 
This is a master Mason's apron uh, per our regulations up here in Canada. And it was this, this picture that sent David going, well, what do the rosettes stand for? So for those of you who can't see, the previous one we looked at was just a white plain leather apron. And this one, would you like to describe is, it, Jared? Oh, okay. Sorry. It's, 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 just, it's the same white leather apron, except that it, it is bordered in blue ribbon, lined in blue, with the flap has a ribbon on it as well. And there are three rosettes, one in each of the lower corners and one on the flap. And then there are silver tassels that hang down from the top. And I will, I will concede to David that the silver tassels apparently <laughs> are, are symbolic of the tassels that were usually on the ties because you would tie your apron around your waist and tie it in the front. Do so yours, just, do yours hmm? make noise when you walk? Jingle, 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 well, jingle. Okay. <laughs> that, what, here's a here's a funny thing is that you can't my, my apron that I when I when I became a master mason I got my father's old apron and it has one piece solid like they're they're like it's it, they're solid tassels so it's like this one big chunk of metal so I didn't get to have dangly balls until I actually got my past master's apron. <laughs> this this is this is rated G. Well, these things. There's, a, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of there's a couple of masons in our jurisdiction that have the free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we've got one of those in our in our uh, district. He was a past deputy, and we we call it the right. Bob Nigren warning system because you can. Yes, hear him exactly. Yeah, you know when he's oh, coming. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so to give a little bit of because I mean, if you watch this, this sent me so when when this all started because I love a research project. And I remember watching the, the video when we have a link is from the California Masons and it's showing 19th or not, sorry, the 18th century aprons that are in the uh, Museum of Scottish Rite collection. And that they're, they're these beautifully painted and embroidered, there Stephen's showing a picture of one if it'll stay in, um, aprons that are really sort of more akin to tracing boards than they are to aprons. And so, and then, and then somewhere at some point uh, we split and then now, and then you get, cause because up here in BC, our lodges follow the um, English, Scottish and Irish grand lodges. They were all, that's, that's where their constitutions came from. Our aprons are based upon the aprons that were regulated back in 1815 when the grant, when, when ugly was formed between the ancients and the moderns. So, but you guys down in the States, because you guys, I think the, is it the Grand Lodge of New York is the oldest? What is the oldest Grand Lodge in the United States? I want to say Pennsylvania. You know? I was going to say Pennsylvania as well. There is, so, but it, it, it split back in the 19, early eight, or late 18th century. I think it was formed. So you, you have a, a, like a branch tradition that so you don't necessarily follow the ugly rules and stuff. Yeah. So for those of us that are ill-informed, it's actually an acronym. Oh, sorry. Yeah. The United Grand Lodge of England. <laughs> sorry, brothers from the <laughs> European Union. I just, I always, it's just easier to say ugly. <clears throat> no yeah, dissent so, there at all. Yeah, so, well, no, I mean, but, but it's interesting that, yeah. So there was that with, with the, when, we were talking about, you know, well, the royal because it's Freemasonry. Everything has a meaning. Everything is steeped in deep ritual and spiritualism and symbology. And no, they're and, just decoration. And apparently, well, here here's a lecture. No, yeah, here, here here's a lecture on the Master Mason's apron for an ancient lodge, and it says <clears throat> the three rosettes. Okay, um, the three rosettes form a second triangle which penetrates the triangle formed by the flap and thus teaches us of the union between body, soul, and spirit. Or it could just be as any good interior des graphic designer will point to, it's called balance. <laughs> there is nothing, no, and trust, I mean, I've, I've gone through as many sources as I can find that basically the rosettes were added because they're decoration. And they were, they were um, regulated, is that the right word? Yeah, regulated with the constitution in 1815 that um, you would have, uh, entered apprentices would have a plain white apron. For, uh, fellow crafts would have an apron with two rosettes, one in the each bottom corner. And then a third rosette would be added to a master mason's apron with the ribbons. 
with the um, bordering. And then some point between the 1820s and 1841, the tassels were added. So, but it was just, it, I just find it because when, when we're initiated, we're given the plain, you know, we're given the lambskins apron and we're supposed to keep it and wear it with pride and for at least two more degrees. And then, you know, when you become a master apron, it gets taken and give it, you get this really big, you know, fancy one that you wear for the rest of your life or until you become a past master. And in, yeah. in some, in some places, the apron that you're given as a master Mason, the plain white lambskin apron is solely for the purpose of being buried with it. That's the one that's supposed to be draped over your coffin and, and inside underneath the flap, it actually says that. Um, I have one upstairs. Actually, I should go grab it. Um, so what do you do if you're getting burnt? Burn it with you. Well, or, or my favorite one that's new uh, is you uh, you're, get uh, you're, involved in water. At, at your Masonic funeral, right? This would be laid upon the casket or the table uh, presentation where your picture would be or whatever. Ah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I know, right? Right. Um, okay, so this document that I've got is, is another paper on the evolution of our aprons, right? <clears throat> um, for the next 150 years, there was little change. Today, it's ruled that the apron of an entered apprentice must have a flap, that the two rosettes of the fellow craft must be attached to the lower corners of the apron. So the two rosettes of a fellow craft are the two lower ones. Interesting. Um, and that the aprons of a master mason are to be edged in sky blue ribbon of not more than two inches in width. Right. That comes from the, the 1815 Constitution of the United Grand Lodge. Okay. But it's interesting because we don't do that in an ancient lodge up here. Like that's a, that Canadian work, you get a different apron when you become from under apprentice to fellow craft to master mason. But in an ancient lodge, we don't. Right. We just get a, um, well, we, 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 we wear our, it differently. Yeah. We yeah. wear ours differently, but um, we give our entered apprentices and fellow crafts a lambskin apron. Um, they don't get the fancy blue one until they're a master mason. No. But the fellow crafts in an ancient lodge don't get the blue rosettes either. No, no, no. they don't. No, right. they've only in that funny Canadian work. <laughs> so you, have, you get a whole different apron for each degree. In the Canadian work, yes, there's a different. Yeah. Each degree has its own apron, and it's it's like it's written in the like. There's a little, not a lot. But the, in their ritual, there's a, you know, presentation. It's not like the first apron charge. It's usually, it's only right. a few lines, but yeah. Right. Whereas in the ancient work that we do, you have one apron and you wear it differently. And the rosettes, but don't the rosettes come in to play after each degree? You get one rosette basically for each degree? Or the, no, just all three the, of them, all three of them show up no, at the Master Mason? In a, in a Canadian, we're in a Canadian ritual lodge. <laughs> When you go from the entered apprentice apron is the plain white, the fellow craft apron has the two rosettes in the bottom, and then the master mason gets the master mason's apron. But in a, in an ancient ritual lodge, you use the white lambskin apron for both entered apprentice and fellow craft, and then when you become go through the master mason ritual, that's when you get the fancy apron. So they do merge at master mason. Yeah, all, yeah, they are the merchant master mason in an ancient ritual lodge. Yeah. Huh. Any idea when that happened? When that when it was changed, or I would imagine that that wasn't always the same like that. Well, you see, the interesting thing is, is if you if you listen to people talk up here, because it's called the it's also called the American right up here. I, I prefer calling it ancient, but it is also known as because it, it came yeah. up from California apparently with the miners <clears> that came up during the gold rush and silver rushes up here in BC. So that's why I find it interesting that it's like our aprons are so different for the master Mason than you guys wear down there in Washington state. Cause I would have thought that maybe 
because Washington State's, I, I think you guys had a you guys had a gold rush too, and people would have come out from California for that. I, like, do you guys know the history of where your ritual comes from? Our gold rush was was people stopping here on the way to somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> That's how the, the Nordstroms and stuff made their money was providing supplies to other people who are leaving. Uh, See, in, the, in, in this document, it says in 1815, the United Grand Lodge enforced a standardized apron. Yeah, uh, that's what I said. Yeah, 1815. So. Yeah, but that's, but you see, the Canadian work lodges, because the Grand Lodge of Canada in, Ontario, in the province of Ontario, I have to put that in because it was originally the Grand Lodge of Canada, but they ended to change it. Um, is they, they only do the Canadian ritual. Right. So they would follow similar to um, what the United Grand Lodge of England does. So, but I don't, I don't, I don't know how we got as weird as, because you got to remember up here in BC, we had like the, a lot of, so there were lodges also that followed the Scottish that were uh, formed under a Scottish, the Scottish constitution and their aprons don't have an angular flap. It's rounded and a different, and different colors. The, there's just the flap yeah here hold on a second i can i will i have uh lodged canadian regalia Let's see if i can find a picture of do 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 scottish style aprons while you're doing that the grand lodge of washington is an offshoot of the grand lodge of oregon which i think came from missouri right Correct. so here hold on a second uh th this is from my favorite masonic web uh store these are apparent these are scottish right like scottish aprons and you see how like they're similar but instead of it's rounded at the top yeah that's what we have for our scottish right yep yeah fancy fancy yep so scottish I, haven't been, I haven't been to scottish right so long do matt do you do we wear different aprons i don't think he means scottish right i think he means scottish scottish yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, scottish, yeah, yeah. like the united grand lodge of scotland yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Like, <laughs> like actually Scottish. Scottish yeah, yes, real yes, Scottish, yes. not that, not Scotland. that fake French Scottish. <laughs> Man, we are just stirring all sorts of pots today. <laughs> Man, I'm surprised I don't get death threats in my in, in my emails. Any comments can be directed directly to Jared uh, <laughs> <laughs> at, at Grumpy Past Master. <laughs> so yeah, so. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's I um I haven't been to we have lodges up here that do the emulation ritual, which is um what that was the ritual that was that came out of the union of the ancients and the moderns in the early 19th century. They actually have emulation lodge, which is they went through and came up with the official ritual. And it's so and we have lodges here in BC that do that ritual. Um, but the closest one is in Kamloops and I haven't been able to get to one of their meetings to see what their ritual looks like. It's weird. Their, their aprons would look the same because they fall they're under our constitution. So. I've, I've been there. Is that, is that, uh, Mount St. Paul that you're talking about? Does that one? I don't remember the name. I don't remember which lodge it is. I just know that there's an emulation. I mean, I, yeah. apparently I, the ideal lodge is Victoria number one. Right. Apparently, that if you really want to see emulation done well, you go to Victoria number one. Mm. It's a long drive and a ferry ride. Yeah. Nah, I'll just go. I'll go visit Mackenzie. <laughs> yeah, sure. Why not? Right. Maybe Connor will put you up. There you go. So, uh, speaking of stirring pots and getting people in trouble, I will get myself in trouble by saying the following. Here in Washington, it's not really prescribed what your apron looks like at all. It's not in the Washington Masonic Code. The Not even ap the aprons for officers are detailed in the Washington Masonic Code, but you or I could, in theory, go and grab any old apron we wanted, and you know, rounded corners, rosettes, whatever, and wear it to a lodge meeting. Wow, yeah. I'm pretty sure someone would tackle you and throw you to the ground, <clears> and <throat> and you probably wouldn't get past the Tyler and the sword and the whole nine yards. <clears throat> but yeah, in actually, theory, it is it is not. It is not prescribed in the in the Masonic Code. In Cuba, when I went there, they they don't really care. Uh, the aprons have 
just the significance of you wear an apron um, as a master mason there. Um, they don't get an apron until they're a master mason, and they're not supposed to wear one until they're a master mason. They um, And then they just grab whatever one's on the pile on their way in the door. So, yeah, you, yeah and because I, there's a lot of donations that go to Cuba, and so they're uh, – They've got a lot of hand-me-downs from the United States and Canada. And um, so, you know, I walked in there and these guys are just grabbing an apron and they're like, oh, he's a past master. Oh, no, he's not, right? No, but, but he's wearing a past master's apron. Yeah, it doesn't matter here. It's just the fact that they're wearing an apron. Right. So it's kind of, it was, it was a little interesting. Uh, and, I, and I don't know if it was, if it had anything to do with their um, ritual, uh, but or if it was just simply out of uh, necessity that they just use whatever aprons are available. That's cool. That's it's yeah. It's different. It, it's cool different when you observe Everything's it. Different everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, and you know that lodge. It was it was really interesting because that lodge that I went to go visit in Matanzas, um, I think it was forty years old, right? And uh, it is, it's only had three worshipful masters, right? <laughs> but they stay until they're voted out. No right? need for past masters aprons, eh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, yeah. what do you, do you guys have anything that you do with? aprons so if someone passes away I, we just sort of touched on this a minute ago but i, I want to go a little deeper if if a brother dies do we um do we what do you do with their apron um a lot of times um if they have if they don't have like a member in their family to pass it down to they get passed back to the lodge and then handed back out like um handed out to like the past master's aprons will go back to the lodge and then they'll be handed out to a new master like when they um when they're finally installed in the east cool um so yeah that's here i get as secretary i get given a lot of aprons as from brothers who have passed away and uh i think that's a pretty cool tradition actually that you get to pass them down and say you know this mm -hmm. was this was Fred Thompson's apron and he was a cool guy. And, and, uh, yeah, I'll yeah. remember Fred. The, uh, I, I'm, there's somewhere I want to go with this, but I'm being informed that maybe we should go, we should stop our recording for the evening <laughs> and, uh, and go on another time. Those dang technical people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the six hour episodes aren't a good idea. Uh, so, <laughs> Uh, with that, uh, next week, continuing our discussion of aprons will be my thoughts on what to do with old aprons, or not really, <laughs> what, what the Grand Lodge of Washington does with old aprons. But uh, I want on behalf of Stephen and Jared and uh, David and myself, I want to thank you all for listening to the Working Tools podcast, and we look forward to talking to you again next week. Goodbye. <laughs>